any other questions? Do you other questions in the audience? Yes, Pete? Maria, what? Uh, nice to meet you on a professional. How about anybody up there who can best answer the question? We need to read, Bristol, Warren, Barrington. Currently, no. Currently <laughs> get our currently get our water. And what percentage from each bay, what percentage from each province of the cross bay pipeline that doesn't exist. And all the other three months of lives which we apparently are mandated by the state to do something about fixing up. And, and, and one comment. To the extent that anybody here who is a decision maker is intent to rely for strategic planning on stimulus money, while money from the state, I would caution you to be very careful. Who would like to address that? The percentage of... Right now, from our treatment plant in Warren, we're uh, producing approximately 1.5 million gallons a day. One, either between one and 1.5 million gallons a day. The rest is supplied by Providence as, need, as needed. Uh, average in the winter time is about three, three and a half million a day. Where does the water you're processing and treatment the treatment plant of water come from? It, it comes from the, all the reservoirs that feed into it, including the Shad Factory, Anawan, and Swansea reservoirs. So yes, while the slide said that they're, they're not drinking water that's processed there, the truth is that you really are drinking that water to the point of over a million gallons a day right now. And the million gallons a day represent what percentage of the water supply for the three counties? Approximately 30%. And the 70% comes from product, which comes from situation. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a question to clarify that? In Rehoga, the testimony was that the Shad pipeline was going to produce a Jerry, Jerry, closer to you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Rehoga, it was uh, testimony by the executive director of the lease that the Shad pipeline is not functioning properly and only delivering 0.3 uh, million gallons per day. Now, if it's only 0.3 million gallons per day, there's only one other reservoir that you can pull water from, and that's the Kikamua. Are you saying that 1.2 million gallons per day are currently being pulled out of the Kikamua? So, so we're drinking, or is that being Put, is it being put? That's drinking water. It's being processed by a warren plant. And yes, that is going out there. That pipeline from the Shad factory has been there over a hundred years. Frank, use the microphone. Take the mic so can hear you. That, pipe, that pipeline has been there over a hundred years, and I've been drinking water in this process at the warren plant for 74 of those years. And there, there are people here that have been drinking that water longer than that, processed by that plant. And currently, there are people that are drinking that water every day. But this we, are not, we are not on Providence water completely at this time. It, there's a reason why I ask, because in the Warren Council meeting, it was clarified uh, by you and Mr. Gennetto that it's very expensive to keep the water treatment plant operating at less than 100%. And it would appear that we're paying a premium for the water treatment plant water, the, even the 1.2 million gallons, that we're paying a premium over situate. So I ask, how do you validate using more expensive water from the water treatment plant versus just purchase from the situate reservoir? Um, I think we have to be really careful here about talking about the cost of purchased versus processed water. And I think we have to be really careful about estimating what we think might be costs when a project hasn't been fully designed, gone out to bid, and contract prices coming in. We do know one thing, and that is that when we compared the cost of water 
previously, before the Providence Water Supply increased their rates, that the cost to process our own water was far more, far less expensive, excuse me, far less expensive than it was to purchase water at a rate from Providence. Now, do we say that today? No. We tell you that that was in 2004, and in the handout you have, I draw your attention to page 7, where we talked about the cost of, in 2000 dollars, the, the, the cost of water that was purchased, well, Pasquale wants me to read it, when the water authority's treatment plant operated at 3 MGD, or higher rates of production, the past actual experience we're not projecting actual experience of producing water was competitive and less than purchasing water, and that's before all the increased rates. In 2003 and 2004, the financial statements reported an increase in operating expenses because of the increase in the cost of having to purchase Providence water. It was $1,132 per gallon. And that was an increase from the year 2000 of $953. And the cost to produce by the authority was $698. That's the only data we have that's real data in the past. May I ask one more question, please? Why wasn't that provided to Camp Dresser then? Why is Camp Dresser saying you need to do that study? We can't answer what Camp Dresser had until 2004. He asked why Camp Dresser he didn't re reference that in the report, and I answered that they very may well, they very may well have had that information. In fact. The information that this was derived from was part of an offering statement that they were the consulting engineer. So they did have that information at the time. Why they chose not to report it, I can't answer. Any more questions from the floor? Marina, there's a member uh, here that would like to be introduced. My question is, what's more important here, the quality of our water or a few cents one way or another? I came here hoping that uh, we go with good quality water, not water that has to be processed, become tasteless, things like that. So, as far as the money is concerned, the water companies collecting a few bucks from many of us. But I'd rather have it, have good water, as Gary points out, the second best in the United States, than not have processed water if we can possibly avoid it. My question is, is redundant. I'm, I'm concerned about the quality of the water too. And uh, I don't care if we have to pay a few extra bucks for it, but it should be good water. We have to filter our water now. And that costs us a lot of money. We have to buy Brita water filters and we won't drink it otherwise. Secondly, what are the conditions of the pipes in town? Are, are the pipes so bad that the water comes to us tainted? No matter how good it is, it comes to us through bad pipes? I don't know. That's the second point. My third question is this. Has anybody ever explored desalinization? We're surrounded by seawater. These are three questions I have. Anybody any answers? Marina, I'd like to uh, recognize Pam Marshallin, who's in the audience. Marshallin, she's the uh, chief engineer and general manager of Providence Water Supply. Would you stand up, Pam? Thank you. Didn't I just meet you yesterday? Is she going to respond? Oh. There have been numerous engineering studies to uh, answer the questions in reverse. Um, at least 10 that I'm aware of in the course of my representing the authority. And many alternatives were explored to produce a reliable source of water that meets all federal standards in terms of safety and drinking. I cannot imagine that the Rhode Island Department of Health and the EPA 
who are responsible for making sure that every drop of water that goes into our bodies would allow even a half gallon of water to go through the system that does not meet the highest degree of standards and safety. We may not like the taste of the water. I can assure you when I drink Providence water, I don't like that taste because I've spent so many years drinking Bristol County water, I actually prefer it, and choose not to drink Providence water. It's, it's a preference. That should be distinguished, however, from whether or not the quality of the water meets all federal and state standards and the water that's produced by Bristol County meets all those standards. And when it does not, if it does not, it doesn't go through the distribution system. And a report has to be made to the state and to the public under the law when those standards are not met. And the pipes, I think you want to call it pipes. The addition of the pipes is there any answer to that? Since, since, what, what are the quality of the pipes? That's out. Could they since, be since, since we've taken over the water authority, we have put $18 million in infrastructure to fix the piping, install mains, and uh, the wooden, I can tell you that the wooden pipes in Barrington are no, are no longer there, and all the other uh, piping that we've, and mains that we've replaced, that totals $18 million. This week on TV in Lexington, Massachusetts, on the news, they had their second broken water main in a week and in Lexington, they still have wooden pipes in the ground that broke and caused that problem. That's not our case. We have done a tremendous amount of work to replace the, the piping in the ground. Yes. Quick follow-up, Mr. Nenka. I've seen in a couple of places this past Can you hear me now? or Mr. DeLise, for that matter. Uh, I understand from Alan Klepper at the last Barrington Town Council meeting, and also from looking at your minutes over the past year, that you've actually stopped the needed water main replacement annual project that you've been doing. And you've cut back from the fiscal year 2010 due to a lack of funding and due to the, lack, due to the fact that your financial status is so precarious. You're in the fiscal year 2010 annual report that I have a copy of. The solvency, uh, debt solvency ratio is, on, is just at the very bottom of what it has to be. So you can't afford to do the necessary main replacements anymore. You stopped that process. And furthermore, you didn't bother to try to get stimulus money to help that process like other towns are doing. Why would you, and the Para Report 2009 says that those, that that project should continue because the water pipes are horrific. They're in bad shape, they're, they're old, and there needs to be a steady and there needs to be a steady ongoing replacement process. So please explain to us and tell us about the situation that you've actually stopped doing that needed replacement process and how is that going to be resolved, that problem? Thank you. Thanks. Who wants to take that? Mr. Uh, a couple of points in, in that. Um, first of all, there is no solvency or insolvency figure. Uh, what's required under the bond documentation is that the authority have on hand 125% of required debt coverage. And so it's not an insolvency. The water authority is not insolvent. It's very much solvent. You just can't spend money. Number two, the second point. So number one is, is, is the bonds and the bonds are very complicated and what gets put into an account for determining uh, that 125% isn't everything. It's a technical point, but needless to say, there's sufficient funds. Second point, most organizations have a wish list of things that they'd like to do. And they put aside money Question. Um, Mr. DeLise, did you make the statement that was presented um, in Mr. Morris's opening presentation that 
it's too much red tape to go through uh, the process of securing stimulus money. Did you make that statement? Yeah, uh, yes I did. Uh, there is a number of, uh, a number of requirements, requirements that have to be met in, in order to use uh, the, uh, that, those funds. And uh, unfor unfortunately, uh, by the time you meet all those requirements, some, of, some uh, projects end up costing much more than for example, borrowing money in a different way, or just borrowing money. And that's why I made that statement. It's true. Uh, our uh, pipeline projects ended up costing between two and two and a half times the cost. Oh, okay, I'd just like to follow that up with um, my personal observation that it's quite worrisome to me as a ratepayer that you as the leader of the Water Authority would find it too troublesome to go through the difficulty, whatever that might be, of securing money that was available to do this project. East Providence has done it, North Kingstown has done it. Is You're surrounded by very intelligent people, apparently. And it's concerning to me that as uh, the head of this authority, you would find it too much of a job to do that. Um, secondly, I'd like to ask, and as you say, costs do get out of hand. We don't really know the cost, and I think that's why we're all here. And you've just said it yourself. You don't know the cost. Secondly, I just would like to ask, is there an expiration date on this stimulus money available? I can answer the questions under the IRS money, uh, the IRA money. Um, there's, there were three types of IRA money that were available under the Stimulus Act. There was one that were outright grants. We didn't qualify for any of those uh, because of the nature of the projects, um, so that wasn't an opportunity. The second type of financing involved low interest subsidized loans. And what that means is, and those are, are actually not, those are, are run by the Rhode Island Water Resources Board. And in order to apply for that, for those funds, there were a number of requirements that the uh, Democratic legislature put into effect. Buy American. So you can't buy your pipe overseas, for example. You have to buy American, and so the cost of the pipe, for example, was more expensive buying American and buying overseas, one example. The second example is you had to pay prevailing wages, and there was a certain type of um, project management that had to be done that's not otherwise required by the authority under its laws. We know all this because we did apply for some of those funds, and we did do a 5.5 million bond project using those funds. So it's not accurate to say that there were no stimulus funds. Uh, the stimulus funds were used for the painting of the tanks, um, and they were used for the main projects, installation of mains and the like. Our experience with borrowing that amount of money, 5.5 million, was that the cost to do those projects was more than the cost to do the project without meeting those requirements. So when it came for the last round of subsidized interest financing, the question was, do we want to go through that process again or not? And I think it was a sound business judgment to not for a, it's one thing if you're borrowing $30 million and you have to do those project costs, it's another when you're borrowing three or $4 million and it's a complicated process with oversight 
that the authority otherwise doesn't have and doesn't need. So saying it a different way, the cost of the pipe was higher, the cost of another engineer on top of the authority's engineer made for the cost of borrowing that money cost prohibitive. And that was the decision of the board, not the executive director, uh, to not do those and apply to those funds. That decision was also made with um, Tony Simeone, head of Rhode Island Water Resources Board, and we brought to his attention the, that cost difference because we felt it was important for other ratepayers and other communities to know that the cost of, of the projects were escalating because of some of these federal requirements that other, were otherwise part of the, of, of the uh, program. Uh, we've got a question here. Excuse me, Jim, quick, Brian. I think Kendra, if you want to finish, say something about this. Uh, just to clarify, Sandra, again, if you're up to the Rhode Island Water Resources Board, I believe you mean the Rhode Island Water Finance Agency. I apologize exactly who I'm referencing. Thank you. This is for each of the directors. I'd like to understand whose interests you primarily represent. Uh, and then also, in the absence of the legislation, would you, as a director, with the interests of the primary party in mind, be pursuing the SHAD project? Directors. Uh, I represent the ratepayers and the non-ratepayers, any citizen of Bristol County, and their interest is my interest. My personal opinion, we're out here on a peninsula. If something happens completely to this situate reservoir, we have nothing. So I definitely would support the upkeep of the reservoirs and the treatment plant for emergencies. Bill okay. Gosselin from Warren. Um, I echo the same sentiments as John Gennetto. Uh, from time to time, I watch the various town council meetings, particularly uh, right across Bristol and Barrington a lot. And the members of the town council seem to be uh, appreciative of the reservoirs and maintaining uh, the BCWA using those resources to process water at the treatment plant. I think they also feel to give up that right would put us at the mercy of um, Providence Water and having to pay their rates. So I would be willing to pursue at nominal cost what it would take to get the treatment plant up and running at full capacity and providing the quality of water at the lowest rate possible. Question again? Well, uh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, thank you for providing the legislation. I, I think I, I haven't had a chance to read it, obviously, just being here tonight. But, but I wanted to reference the point you made with regard to the uh, legislative mandate and, and, and pursuing what you have to based upon that mandate. Uh, are there any boundaries within the legislation that dictate what percentage of the water supply you have to maintain? Uh, we, we talked about about a 30% now coming from the, the BCRW. Uh, is, is there any wiggle room within the, within the legislation to drop that volume to a point where you could sort of accommodate the ratepayers and taxpayers who want either better quality or for a cost measure? If you do begin to see that one cost outweighs the other, do you have wiggle room within that legislation to change your production outflow uh, to accommodate until something can be done with infrastructure? Anyone? Someone from Water Resources Board want to answer that? <coughs> Uh, Kenny Burke from the uh, Water Resource Board, and I'm not going to answer the question from a legal perspective, not being an attorney, but I've read through the legislation multiple times since I've been here uh, with the board. Uh, I, I do not believe it provides a good one. It does describe the Central Reservoir, the water from Providence, as the, uh, I, I perceive it as more of a temporary measure, an interim measure as Bristol County then exercises what's been statutorily required of them in the Water Resource Board to get their existing sources of supply back online. I, I will acknowledge, however, that there is a, um, a technical issue uh, 
uh, to acknowledge with respect to the flow in the uh, East Bay pipeline. You need to keep water flowing. Ms. Michonne could probably speak to that, but it's approximately a million gallons a day. Otherwise, the water stagnates and you have operational issues. So there is a practical limitation of a minimum of one million gallons a day. That being said, there's still another complication to also understand the interaction between Bristol County and East Providence and their interconnection. So it, it gets a little complicated very, very quickly. Statutorily, I believe the intent is to have uh, the, the existing reservoirs put back online, but I can tell you, practically speaking, now that the East Bay Pipeline's there, you have to keep a million gallons a day flowing. Thank you. Do you, do you have a question? David Farish from the Warrantown Council. I know we don't know the actual cost of the pipeline, but the question that was raised, and I think it's important, is the fact that there is approximately $5.8 million for the Shad pipeline, and this is a question really for the Water Resource Board. Uh, will there be money if the price tag goes up to $8 million or $9 million? That's my question. Uh, currently, what the state has provided the Water Resource Board with is, is approximately, um, I think we've got about $6.9 million of uh, remaining bond funds. And, and I've been working with uh, Ms. Morse and Ms. Black, and uh, we are working with the budget office to scrutinize money that's been spent and the remaining bond proceeds, inclusive of uh, why they were solicited in the first place and timing, if you will. Uh, we have received recently some uh, updated estimates from Bristol County, and we also have uh, received a, a schedule. It's, it's my intent to take that information and go to the next level, which I think is the theme of this uh, open forum, to look at all those options. And as uh, the directors have also pointed out, we also have to comply with the law. So we're taking very deliberate and measured steps to look at the remaining money that's, that's available, and then we'll pair that up against our, our best estimates and come up with a good plan that, that uh, all parties can live with. Thank you. Mr. Breck, can I ask you a question? How many communities in the state of Rhode Island are right now 100% using the Situate Reservoir? It's um, actually, I, I'd probably defer to Ms. Michonne. There's, there's at least four major wholesale operations that derive water uh, from uh, the province water supply board, but then they in turn uh, supply other uh, water supplies as well. So, Pam, I'm, I'm, I know I'm off of my numbers, but I'm close. Do they have a redundant supply of water, or are they strictly staying with situ? There's um, several suppliers that uh, augment their wholesale purchases with their own production capacity. There are other suppliers that do have uh, no primary source of uh, water, but they are in close proximity to other uh, um, suppliers and, and through the Water Resources Board's interconnection program, they, are, uh, they have access to alternate supplies of water. Questions? Um, just have a few comments uh, followed by a question from Mr. Morris. First comment is just sort of tongue in cheek. I'm not sure whose idea it was to put uh, bottled water up on the stage instead of tap water, but I found that amusing. Um, that's it, that's my good. In, uh, in March of 2008, BCWA was part of a nationwide investigative study released by the Associated Press that examined the types of drugs found in the U.S. water supplies. The water utilities that Test for pharmaceuticals found trace amounts of medication, things like epileptics, sex hormones, mood stabilizers, antibiotics, and steroids, which many scientists fear may have long term uh, health effects and environmental effects. But what's more shocking is that half of the water utilities in the report, including the BCWA, don't test for pharmaceuticals, and I think that ought to change in the future. Um, my next comment through no fault of the residents, water pressure in several neighborhoods in Bristol County is far too low. Thousands of gallons of water are wasted each day as a result, and it costs thousands of dollars per home to remedy the situation. 
I think it's unfair for so many people to pay the same service charges as others when they receive significantly less service. The mission of the BCWA should be updated so the organization is required to meet minimum water pressure standards for firefighting equipment and appliances such as washing machines and dishwashers. And my uh, last comment for my question, I just want to thank Marina and East Bay Patriots for their efforts. Um, however, I, as we consider possible solutions to the problems we face, um, I want to warn everyone of an ongoing movement to turn our water supplies into private commodities. And on Sunday at 7 o'clock at the Firehouse Theater in Newport, a documentary film will be shown called Blue Gold, The Water Wars, which delves into this topic, and I urge everyone to attend. And finally, my question for Mr. Morse, um, which, which I believe someone's already addressed um, partially. You mentioned in your uh, talk about a redundant connection to the Situate re Reservoir. Uh, do you consider that a full backup, and what would happen if it became contaminated? Yes, I, I personally consider it a full backup to have two roads. Uh, the question of uh, contamination of the Situate Reservoir is a vexing question. I mean, if there was some sort of attack for some reason that we could not drink the Situate Reservoir water, uh, that's a statewide issue. That's, that's a very significant statewide issue. So the real issue is, it, you know, it goes to the question of how much protection do you want? I mean, we could double the size of our police force, our fire departments. We all know that increasing that protection is a good thing, but it comes down to cost. And, and you know you can't have uh, everything that you want, so you have to do cost-benefit analysis. And my view is the redundant link uh, to the Situate Reservoir through the pipeline in East Providence would serve as a redundant connection. The probability of losing all of our water uh, is simply not there because we, we still have uh, some abilities if there was a nationwide or some sort of attack on the water supply. There are alternatives. I mean, people live through this kind of a crisis at that, that level. But I tend to think that we can't purchase all the protection that we want, and so you have to make some sensible decisions. What are some of those alternatives? May I comment on that, Marina? Are you going to comment on that? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I don't think we can always put everything on the dollar value. You can get by without a police force completely, but you can't get by without war. And we're, in the, we're looking out for the people of Bristol County. Thank you. Marina, this one other point I don't think um, we've made clearly, and I think um, we should make clearly. And it has to do with this concept of redundancy. And, you know, redundant means two different things. Mm -hmm. There's redundant transmission line, which means if one transmission line fails, where do we get our water? And then there's a redundancy in source. And I think we need to clarify that there's two different issues and that they're point. critical to Bristol County because unlike any other city or town in Rhode Island, we have as our main transmission line something that is underneath the bay, 165 feet below the surface, the, the water, the surface, the bottom of the, the surface of the bay, goes across a large body of water and goes through. That pipeline is good for 50, maybe 60 years. At some point, it requires in maintenance and inspection, and that is very difficult to do. And so yes, we may get by for the next five or 10 years, putting our heads in the sand and hoping that there's not a major problem in Narragansett Bay where that pipeline is disrupted. Isn't that but when it is, Providence, doesn't that come in? East Providence, can that do it come in? We'll get to East Providence in a minute. If something happens to that pipeline, this county's in serious trouble. There are two emergency connections that were built at the, before that was, was, those emergency connections only provide one million gallons of water. That's far less than what this county needs. So that's, a trend, that's what we talk about, a, a redundant transmission line. But there's also been a policy articulated by the state, which was some of the background to the legislation. And that was that we have a redundant source. And so in addition to meeting the challenges of having this state-of-the-art pipeline underneath the bay, we also have the issue that there may not be sufficient water coming from that source, and we already have the legal right 
to withdraw water from sources outside Rhode Island jurisdiction. At a point when water becomes more and more scarce, and there's more growth in the state of Rhode Island, and more people catching it, uh, uh, more people attack. <laughs> <laughs> so connecting, connecting, connecting to situates. We absolutely need to maintain the right to those reservoirs. Can I just clarify one thing, though? If the under the bay pipe fellows, we still have the East Pro can come in the other way. So the East Pro is interconnect. That's what that's there for, right? They, uh, they're all in the bay. East Providence uh, water means are in the bay. Our, uh, our connection is under the bay. Right. They are all in the ocean. They have a life expectancy between 50 and 65 years. If they maintain, maintenance of these pipes is, is very expensive, uh, maybe. It might, it might even be impossible to maintain these speed pipeline because it's so deep under the bay. But even when maintained, they're not going to last forever. So what do we do then? That's why this law, see the people that wrote this law understand that. They're not going to last forever. It's so imperative to keep uh, the existing water supply, the plant, to rebuild the shed pipeline. As Ken Berg just said, the, legis the legislation sort of uh, alludes to the, East, to the East Bay pipeline being an emergency kind of connection and to be our existing uh, facilities to be the perpetual providing most of the water to Bristol County. Thank you, Mr. Joe has and I'm going to go back close to an hour to my first question, and no pun intended, I don't want to sound all wet over here. <laughs> However, all this stuff, and I'm not saying you're wrong about the underground and it could go bad out across the bay, but I still think the elephant in the room is one thing. We did receive, and I still haven't heard an answer. It's been nine, ten months, maybe. I've never gotten an answer to this one question. That treatment plan at Warren, we had funds to make it 21st century. We would have the backup from the reservoir, uh, from the shed, from Massachusetts. You had all the permits, I guess everything lined up to do all of that. Again, and I, I'd like to leave you with, this is what got me involved. We got X amount of dollars, $29.6 million to do that. That's the answer I want. We shouldn't even be here tonight if that money was given to complete the Cross Bay Pipeline and simultaneously do the Rio Hope Hook and East Providence Interconnect. So, Mr. Delice, you're right. If something goes wrong tomorrow with the Cross Bay Pipeline, it costs an astronomical amount of money for it to get repaired, correct? Yeah. So, why weren't the funds that were dedicated to that project when it started in the late 80s, early 90s, ever done and we wouldn't, we'd be home tonight watching TV? We wouldn't be here. What have I think, as a ratepayer and as a taxpayer, and this hits more than Bristol Warren and Barrington. This hits the state. Everybody talks about it's state money like it's free. State money doesn't fall out of a tree. It comes out of all of our pockets. Well said. Yeah. So my question again, and if I haven't lost my hair already, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but my question is very simple. Why wasn't that project done correctly in the first place? We would all be doing something else tonight. Why wasn't that project done? The money was there, the plane was there, it was mandated by the state. Everything was done correctly. What happened to that? We only got the Cross Bay Pipeline. We should have had three. Now, I don't want to keep dragging on this, but what happened? That's all I ask. Anybody want to respond to what happened? I think we're confusing project. No, well, no. It, it was mandated. Yeah, it was mandated that So the first part of the, the first, the first
first part of the project was completed, and that's the cross state pipeline. Right. The second part of the project was completed, and that's the interconnections for. for it doesn't projects. say it's completed. The third, on the report. Okay, can I just tell you the projects that were completed and not talk about? But that wasn't right. completed. Okay, can I tell you what we done? Okay. So the third part of the pro the project started out with the cross state, the East Bay pipeline, the East Province connections, the pumping station. The improvements to the Child Street treatment plant were completed. It's part of it's part of the project, uh, and that was completed for phase one. Phase two of the treatment plant is uh, under design, and the Shad line had one project that was submitted to Water Resources Board. And since Water Resources Board is here, I'd like them to comment on that project and why it was not approved. And so a second re re-engineered project was designed, and then a third project was designed, and that is what is currently before Water Resources Board. So if the Water Resources, Resources Board could comment on the history of the Shad line and the various factors and what led to uh, the projects as, as they were evaluated by the state. Before, before we go on, can we just clarify these projects? You're saying it's functional, it's working? If, if that was completed? The, the additional, because the direct, your, your own report says it's not. It says it's, it's a gravity pull line. It's not being pulled by a pumping station. Is it being pulled by a pumping station? Or is it being filtered into the East Bay by gravity? Well, 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 and I would, I would hope so. Okay. Ken, do you want to answer? Thanks for, uh, thanks for the setup, Sandy. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Uh, seriously, though, this, uh, there's a, a very long history of uh, progress from Bristol County Water Authority and the Water Resources Board in advancing these projects. Yes, you know, the, the East Bay project uh, took off, and uh, there was a simultaneous effort, to, from my understanding, and again, been with the Water Resources Board for a couple of years now, but learning the history. Um, and, and I believe it is spelled out in Bristol County's handout that they've handed out tonight, and I know you haven't had a chance to go through it, but there, there was deliberate attempts to advance uh, all the projects that were on the books, and we talk about three, I mean, I see four projects, these big pipeline, uh, the interconnection with these products, Shad Factory Pipeline, and the uh, Child Street uh, Treatment Facility. So, I guess my, my, my point, uh, Sandy, is that uh, from what I've been able to uh, understand by uh, reading uh, through the history of all these projects is that uh, there had been a deliberate attempt to get the projects advanced. There has been uh, challenges with uh, the town of Rehoboth, and I have uh, pledged uh, to the executive director and the board in Bristol County to uh, put all of our effort at the Water Resources Board into completing uh, these projects that have been languishing for some time. The, the, the projects that are, uh, the gentleman asked me which projects, the projects that are remaining are the treatment facility and the um, Shad Factory pipeline, essentially the reservoirs. Now, I, I know that Bristol County has recently started talking about uh, additional interconnections. I have requested that uh, we work together and come up with a master plan, a schedule, uh, a pro forma, if you will, of uh, projected uh, costs so that we can take our available $6.9 million bond money and uh, advance it uh, against what uh, is projected as our cost. And, and to Gary Morse's point earlier, we can put dollar values on these projects. Uh, and, and you know, with respect to the directors, um, that, that's not the last say as to whether or not you know, a project happens or not. But, but certainly, you know, there is, uh, it's just proof, good, good physical uh, judgment to have those um, schedules and then the estimates of cost before everybody so we can make intelligent decisions going forward, especially if the state is going to be on the hook for any additional costs beyond the money that's uh, currently in place. I have one question that was sent to me by an email that I would ask it. Um, I pressed, it's a great period of it. The question is very simple. If there is no money at all coming from the state, will you be going forward with the shad line? I don't think any governing body likes to be caught in that position. That's a decision we'll have to make at that time. That's as simple as that. I mean, 
you're going to wait. But I guess the point is you're going to be wait until you're absolutely sure you have state funding before you do it. We we have to uh, we have to get the projected cost. And as Mr. Burke said, we'll find out what they have, find out what we have, and uh, we'll have to make a decision at that time. But we are still required to continue the process. Whether the state has to give you any money or not. According to our understanding, the state is required to fund it. The legislation requires the legislation requires the state to fund all of the improvements after the Bristol County Water Authority expended up to fourteen point eight million dollars. They expended that a long time ago. And the initial bond referenda that were approved by the voters the money is sitting in an account relates to what was then the cost of the project for completing the shad line. Part of the part of the, the difficulty, in addition to permitting in another jurisdiction, um, has been to get a project that meets all of the state's policy requirements as well as coming on budget. But unless there's a change to the legislation. 100% of the capital cost, of reimbursable costs, are required to be paid by the state. But if they don't have the money. Ken, do you agree with that? It's not true. You can't agree with that. If I could make a comment on that and take you off the hook Ken, for a moment. Uh, Operation Clean Government and Rhode Island Statewide Coalition had their attorneys do an exhaustive review of the statutes when they were moving through this, and it was an exhaustive review. And their conclusion was that the first three projects, being the East Bay Pipeline, the East Providence Interconnect, and the Shad Pipeline, BCWA was responsible for 100% of all of the cost overruns beyond the 14.8 million that the state was delivering. The second part of that was once BCWA did complete all three of those projects, and the timetable was to be back in 1998, that the state would then fund the full upgrade of the water treatment plant. So that's what the state, that's what OCG and RISC's attorneys have interpreted, that, that obligation. So BCWA was responsible for our cost overruns of the first three projects, and the state was responsible for all upgrades following that of the Nea Wells and the water treatment plant. So I, I ask you, does that sound like we're in the ballpark? Uh, yeah, generally, uh, I, I do understand that uh, BCWA was responsible for those crossover runs for the first uh, grouping of uh, projects. And uh, I will uh, admit that the statutes do indicate that in several sections that the State of Rhode Island through the Water Resources Board or the Water Resources Board through the State of Rhode Island uh, will be responsible for uh, remaining costs to complete the projects that were originally contemplated. Now, um, Gary, you had met with myself and the State Budget Officer uh, better than a month ago, and uh, at the conclusion of that meeting, what we offered to do is to take your questions and bring them back uh, to our Bond Council to, to seek clarification on it from the State's side of things. Um, I hope that answers your question. I guess the point that I was trying to make is, statutorily, we agree that there are statutes there, but the practical implementation of those statutes in 2011 might be interpreted that the state now has to come up with 20 plus million dollars for several upgrades of the water treatment plant following the implementation of the first three items. And this is the 2011 question. Does the state have the money to do that water treatment plan upgrade? And then following that, there is the issues that um, the shed has to be dredged, the water quality from the uh, Kikamuit has to be improved in, in some manner. So there's a lot of spending that has to take place at the state level. And back in 1989, Camp Dresser did an analysis of that and said, uh, open your checkbook for about $65 million. Uh, so we, we realize today that the state doesn't have the money for all of this, and I think the practical issue right now, and I want, I'm hoping I can get us back to this, in order to afford a lot of this, the answer seems to be that we have to drink the water that's being processed that we don't want to drink.
because we drank it before and we didn't like it, so we took steps to get away from it. And in order to afford all of these infrastructure changes, the solution appears to be, well, get used to drinking the old water all over again. And that's what really drove us here tonight, was we have to balance it. Are we willing to say that to have redundancy in the Massachusetts reservoirs and spend all this extra money, are we willing to drink the water in order to provide that, or are we willing to simply say, let's stick with the Situate Reservoir and move forward with a plan in that, because that means we save money, plus we don't have to drink the locally processed water. And so, just to try and get us back on track on that, have, have we gotten any input from East of the Way? Sorry, I can't hear you. 